So Benjamin Netanyahu has won the election in Israel, and now Trump has announced that he's running for U.S. president in 2024. So are the bros coming back together? This week, the 25th Knesset of Israel, which is the Parliament of Israel, has been sworn in with several new members of Knesset. Benjamin Netanyahu is now facing one of the toughest tasks after being elected in Israel, and it's forming a government. Talks are undergoing with the right-wing bloc leaders as to who gets what and who the next ministers are, but I want to point out a very interesting fact. On the day of the US midterm election, if I'm not wrong, and shortly after Netanyahu's incredible victory, a blood lunar eclipse appeared in the sky for a few minutes. Now, I was sitting in my living room in Israel when that happened, and I remember I looked at the sky and I saw this incredible big moon that was red and seemed closer than ever. I tried to take a photo of it with my iPhone, but it didn't look good. And before I could find my camera to take another better picture, the moon went back to normal. But it was a very extraordinary sight to see. Thankfully, I have good friends that took several photos of that blood moon and sent it to me. Look how red it is. While I don't know what is the meaning of it, I can surely tell you that after Netanyahu's victory, the left in Israel and the US mourned and prophesied the end of Israel, especially the New York Times. Only because Netanyahu is back. But they are wrong. We will not see the end of Israel, but the beginning of great historic landmarks. Peace agreements, securing the future of Israel, victories, combating global terrorism, including the Iranian regime, and so many other tasks. And with Trump coming back, oh boy, the left will start and speaking tongues with their new made-up prophecies. Remember when Trump became president? The left said the same things and even threatened to move to Canada. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. By the way, a fun fact, the Knesset of Israel was sworn in on the same day the so-called Palestinians celebrated their Independence Day. In Independence Day? From who? What exactly? Palestine was never a country, so it never needed to gain in any independence from anyone. And if not for Israel's victory over the Jordanians during the Six-Day War, the term Palestine as they use it today would have never existed. But the more exciting news is that former president and future president Donald Trump has announced his comeback. He will run for presidency in the 2024 election against Biden. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. I think that even Democrats would vote Trump because they saw how Biden ran the country during his administration. With the embarrassing pullout from Afghanistan that made America look weak, Biden tried to get back into the nuclear deal with Iran, he restored US funding to the Palestinian Authority, giving them $200 million. Now keep in mind that the Palestinians pay salaries to terrorists who murdered US citizens and more. But don't mistake my criticism for hating Biden. I don't believe in hating people. That does not advance anything. I simply think that the world is about to face several crucial challenges that require strong leaders that know what they're doing and don't care about saying the right things, but actually doing the right things. We have the China-Taiwan situation. Iran is still trying to acquire a nuclear weapon. They openly threatened that they would level Tel Aviv and Haifa to the ground. But <laughs> it's, of course, not a threat to Israel alone, but to the whole world. We have the Ukraine-Russia situation, NATO, global recession, the rise in terrorism, and a world crisis is not necessarily an excuse for a crisis in America or Israel or any other country in the world. It's about leaders taking the right steps. For example, as world economies are facing hard times with inflation in the UK reaching 11%, the highest in over 40 years, Israel's economy was ranked the fastest growing Western economy in the third quarter of 2022, according to OECD. There is power in what's happening in Israel, and I believe that it serves as an indicator of what the world will face, be it tough or good times. 
So I advise you to keep following the situation in Israel and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to never miss any important updates. Until next time.